Hi, and welcome to Wasting No Time on HTV. I'm your host, Sharon Moses. We are still flying high on the wings of our successful rollout of the 96-gallon recycling carts. And as you can see, we're still talking about it. So, okay, now what? So everybody has a cart. What do you do with it now that you have it? Believe it or not, there really is a right way to recycle. We want to talk about that today. In the studio is Ed Zilton. He's our Deputy Assistant Director of the Southwest Service Center. He's our resident recycling expert. He's here to tell us what we can and what we cannot put into those recycling carts. Ed, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Sharon. So, is there a right way to recycle? Yes, there is a right way to recycle uh, all of our materials that are collected at the curb in our single stream recycling. Okay, what type of materials can go into these recycling carts? Uh, we have several types of materials that are available to be recycled in the green carts. Anything from our plastic one through fives and number mm -hmm. sevens, mm -hmm. our plastic, uh, our plastic uh, uh, our bottles, our water bottles, our um, plate glass, our non-plate glasses, all of our jars, all of our wine glasses, flattened cardboard, chipboard, mm -hmm. and of course our newspaper prints. So how do you know what's going in the recycling carts as far as what's right and what's wrong? How do we know that the citizens are getting it right? Okay, well we have a couple of ways to look at that. First, at the front line, on the top of each cart, there's a, there's a label that tells you what type of materials are to be placed in the carts. Every three months we have an audit with our vendor, and at, in that audit we actually go uh, line by line, segment by segment, and commodity by commodity, making sure that the right materials are placed in the, in the audits. So if you go into these audits, and I don't think that people knew that, people mm -hmm. don't know that we're actually looking at what they're actually tossing away. Mm -hmm. So when you go into these audits and you look at the material, what are you looking for? Well, we're, we're looking for to make sure first that everything that was on the lid that's supposed to be in there, it's in there. Um, once the uh, commodities are segregated and sorted by the, by the vendors, we have a special place that we call, uh, it's, it's for our trash, our residuals. Mm -hmm. In those residuals, these are the trash contents that are taken from the from the recycled materials. We look at them, we, we talk about them, we film them, we audit them also so we can go back and educate our citizens on telling them what, what are the right things and the wrong things to be placed in the car. So with it being a right way and or a wrong way to recycle, mm -hmm. if we're recycling right, then I'm assuming that's good for the city of Houston, correct? How does it help for us to get it right? Okay. It helps for us to get it right in a couple of ways. One, with those residuals and trash, we have, to, we have to actually pay for those because once that's taken out of the stream, we have to pay for that disposal. But if, we, if we're near right or getting at least almost at least 100% right correctness on our type of materials, then we actually get paid for that. And, that. and that betters our bottom line when it comes to revenue. And if we get it wrong? we get it wrong, we have to pay for it. And that's not one thing we want to stay with because we don't have a budget for that. So we're either getting paid or we're not getting paid. We're either paying for it or we're receiving money for it. Is that's that what correct. you're saying? That's correct, right. The, the close that we get it right, we get money for it. As we sell those commodities to our MRF and us, to our end users. But when we get a lot of trash and residue, we have to pay for that disposal. And you said MRF, just for clarity, what does that mean? A MRF is a material recovery facility. Um, those, those are the ones here in town that actually take all the single stream recycling materials and they process it for us. So we're in the city of Houston is not processing the single stream material? No ma'am, we're only collecting it at the curb and we then ship that material over to a MRF. The MRF then segregates, sorts the materials, bail it up and then it's, and it's sent out and sold to the open commodities market. So what happens if we're getting a lot of wrong material? How is that I know, I know we've asked that question, but how is that kind of, spell it out a little bit. We're looking at this, does it, is it still recyclable material or is it now something else? Some things are, some things that are in the stream that are recyclable, for instance, like a lot of people may put clothes, textiles in there. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't want to put that in our single stream recycling, but we do have a market and a collection point for it here in the city, uh, i.e. our, our drop-off centers, our West Park, our West Park um, recycling centers, and our neighborhood depositories. Well, we have uh, receptacles there to take textiles and clothes. Um, we even see some batteries, household batteries, mm -hmm. okay? Household batteries are not supposed to be placed in the green recycling carts, but we do have a market and a collection point over at our environmental service centers where we do have vendors there that will purchase those materials from us. So they're not, they're not necessarily say recyclable in single stream, but they are recyclable materials. And I think, I think that's the point. People, they mean well. Mm -hmm. And they, they're saying it is recyclable, yes. but not in the current but cart. Not in, but not in the you current single stream. You have to separate some of that stuff and That's recycle it differently. Yes, ma'am. If we contaminate the load, have we, and contaminate by putting the wrong material in there, have we ruined the whole recycling 
process? Well, it, it, won't, it won't entirely ruin the, the process. Some of the materials will be salvageable, but the thing is we want to we make sure we segregate properly because the more segregation and the more separation we have in the materials, it's going to be the, it's going to, it's going to help the, the commodity pricing when we bring it over to the Merck for processing. Well, I want to talk to you more about that. I've brought some things out, so sure. if you'll just hang around and stick with us for the whole show today. I will. More on the do's and don'ts on recycling when we return. Stay tuned.